Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley, if you're new. Thank you for stopping by and clicking on today's video. Today, I am going to be doing some planning, specifically planning for my next science unit from the Good and the Beautiful, which is going to be space science. Today's video is brought to you in partnership with the Good and the Beautiful, and it has just been a nice, relaxing Sunday at home, and my kids are all occupied reading, playing a board game together, so I thought I'm going so, to So before my battery died, as I was saying, my kids are all occupied, and one thing that I've mentioned in a few of my most recent videos is that I really want to be ahead as far as planning goes for the Christmas season and homeschooling is a part of our life and I don't want to be behind on any of my planning that I need to have ready to go. So although we are taking a little intermission through the Christmas season on our The Good and the Beautiful Science units, I still need to have the next one completely prepared so that way during December I'm not doing a prep day, um, I'm able to just enjoy my family for December. So I'm trying to get ahead in all the ways so that I am ready to go come January once the holidays have passed and we're ready to really just dive in and that'll be the perfect time to do space science. Space science has been a unit I've looked forward to doing with my kids for the longest time um, and I'm really excited that we're getting to it. So I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I prepare my science units step by step. I've done this uh, a similar videos like this on my channel before and you guys always really enjoy them but of course every unit has different components so I'm gonna go show you guys my little setup I have here at the table and take you step by step through setting up a the good and the beautiful so site when I am getting ready to do a little prep work I always like to make a coffee and I have a protein bar because I was getting a little hungry I need my phone um, for googling anything I've got my quarter goal sheets that I um, will plan Plan in conjunction with the space science unit and the reason why I'm doing that is because there are field trip ideas and projects and we usually pull those things from our science unit I have my science binder that I've emptied out from our previous unit I really was excited about these one of my friends told me about these and I will link them for you. If you do the good and the beautiful science units, you need these little file folders. They can go right in a three ring binder and then you can put like whatever um, vocabulary words or books or anything right in front of the lesson so you have all of your things together. So excited about that. And then I've pulled down um, some of our own space books to jot those down and kind of see what I want to incorporate from there and of course I have my planner there with my favorite kind of pen to see what we're working with so the first thing I'm going to do is set up my binders so I'm going to um, split up the unit from what I'm going to three hole punch and put in here and what I am going to separate it so um, for copies for the kids so those are gonna be that's gonna be step one for me Snowflakes are coming down Collapse into water when they hit the ground I hear the sound of empty streets So one of the best things about the Good and the Beautiful science units is that it tells you the supplies you're going to need for the whole entire unit. And what I like to do is I like to go through this list and put a list in my phone for anything that I don't have in my house. For example, lesson seven, you need a pillow. We have pillows. Um, but like up here, uh, red velvet cake mix is not something that we usually would have. So I will make one master list and then before we start the unit, I will go to the store and purchase the entire list at one time. So I love that they do that. So that's the next thing I'm going to do is make my list in my phone. Standing on the 
So now that my list is right here, it's not too long. See, just a couple things there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the unit and cut out um, the vocabulary words and any other things like the mini books that are in the unit. And then I'm gonna make a pile of things that I need to photocopy for my kids. For example, this sheet right here says um, why it would be hard to live on Mars and they're supposed to illustrate that. So I'm gonna need to make a copy of this but these things, for example, these are facts about the International Space Station, and you can see that they're meant to be cut out. It tells you at the top what lesson they are, so that's lesson 15. So I'll go ahead and cut these out now, and then I will place them in the little folder that is right behind lesson 15, so that way when I get to lesson 15, it's just right there. Like, I am so excited about these folders. I've been using the Good and the Beautiful for four years now, and I just discovered these folders, and I, I'm really excited about them. So it's gonna make finding all my things so much easier because in the past, I was just putting them like on the inside of the binder right here, and then I would get onto the unit, I would have to sift through everything. Sounds trivial, but this is gonna be really nice. So I'm gonna go through and cut everything out and put what needs to go in here and make a copy or a, a pile for photocopies. That will be my next step. Standing underneath the lights. So here is the binder all ready to go. I have the um, sheets at the front of every lesson with what I need in each of them. So that is something I'm very excited about having. Then I went ahead and assembled the all of the mini books. These are such a favorite component of the science units for me. So I wanted to share them with you. Um, this one especially about Galileo, like it's just so awesome and they're um, really, you just cut them out and I put a little staple in the corner and so we've got a bunch of these to um, have and the lesson will indicate when you're supposed to read them. Like this one says, assemble the book Earth and Mars. So that's this one right here. So I'm just gonna pop it into this folder in the front so then I know which one goes with which. And then the next thing that I have here are all of the sheets that I will be making photocopies of for my kids. Um, it's a small stack of papers, it's nothing crazy. So now my space science binder is all ready to go and now I will move on to the next part of planning my unit which will include some books we have, Dorothy's drinking water, and um, making a list of documentaries and movies that we wanna watch. So I'll show you guys that once I am done with that. Okay, so now I am going through my books. These are all books that I already had in my homeschool library. Each of the science units does come with a list of books that you can add in or not, depending on what you wanna do. Um, but I already had these ones, like this one is the National Geographic for Kids, Little Kids First Big Book of Space. So I pulled that. This one is super old. Um, this is a my first book about space. It was $1.25, so this was made a very long time ago. This one is more recent. This is from Costco, and it was $9.99, um, and the retail price is $24, and we got one of these about like uh, life for mammals, and it's just tons of really awesome information in here more for older kids I would say. So I pulled that and then this book right here is Her, her Story. Um, it's a play on the word history. These are all important women in history and here um, just to show you guys I was going through and I found um, an astronomer here, a mathematician, astronomer, and philosopher. And so I'm going to just tab off the pages in here. Um, so these books are just additional things. We will go to the library as well um, and we'll just kind of, we'll just infiltrate our minds with space. 
So I wanted to um, have these books because what I like to do is I like to just put them in my morning cart formerly my morning basket. That way when we're downstairs doing science as a group, as a family, I already have the books that I want to reference. I'll just leave them in there and then I'll use them as we go through. Um, kind of if I see something in the unit and I wanna read more about that or connect the dots somehow, then I'll pull the books. So I've got my books all set aside. I've got my unit, it's very <laughs> colorful and pretty all set up and so i forgot to mention this but this is a k through eight science unit study um, on space and so now i am going to move on to planning out in my next binder you guys know i'm a pen and paper kind of girl um in our quarter goal sheets these are on my website uh, which is always linked down below for you guys, but I am going to write down some field trip ideas that I have, and I always ask for my kids' input on this um, for field trip ideas that we may or may not be able to do dependent on what's going on, but we're gonna at least jot some ideas down. I also have a space on my sheets, um, and again, these quarter goal setting sheets are on my website for documentaries to watch, which is where I will list out the movies or documentaries we're going to watch. Because for us, my kids love movies and documentaries, and so that's a big part of our homeschool. We like to tie that in, and so, that'll be the next thing that I am going to work on with the input of my children. All right, so to show you guys, there were a ton of space documentaries on Disney Plus. We didn't even look into Amazon Prime yet. Um, and my kids know that sometimes the National Geographic stuff doesn't quite align with our views on creation, but it's interesting nonetheless. Um, so we have the movie Hidden Figures, um, and then these different documentaries that are on the National Geographic section of Disney Plus. For field trip ideas, I have the planetarium. It's closed right now, maybe it'll open. The Children's Museum has some exhibits that demonstrate gravity and different things like that. There's actually a ton on NASA's actual website um, that you can view and look at. And then um, there's some astronauts on Instagram. And so I thought it would be fun to show them some of the accounts. Um, there's one, I think, like astronaut Christina and astronaut Jess. Those are just two that I have found and um, follow. So I thought that I would add that in. So I've got those listed out. And then we'll just... Um, kind of incorporate those as we go through the unit and um just like when we feel like you know when i do mars that would be a great day to do the mars documentary and so i don't necessarily make an exact plan but i just have the ideas and i have the stuff to pull from to really round out the space science unit so one of the things that I love so much about the Good and the Beautiful Science Units is that they are enough on their own to be done without any add-ins to them. But if you're like me and you enjoy that creative component of kind of almost creating like a unit study, like a full immersion into whatever science topic you're studying, then there's enough room for you to be creative as a homeschooling mom and add on things that you want. The lessons do already come with links um, to different videos that you would access and the lessons indicate when you should go there. But I just love that aspect of doing these science units that it's not overwhelming. It's like the perfect amount of information and then you can add on fun activities and crafts and just different things that you might want to include um, as you do a science unit. The other thing that I super love, of course, is that I can teach all of my kids. The lesson extensions for the higher level grades are right in here and so the way that we do the lesson extensions is we do the lesson as a family and then my older two kids 
will do the lesson extension um, right then and there while the younger two might look at a book or they might um, do something else in that time. Sometimes they eat a snack while they work on that. Um, and it's our last thing that we do together as a family um, in our morning time. And I know I'm gonna get asked because I've been getting asked this a lot, how often do we do science? We do science two times a week. So this um, particular science unit, they all have a different amount of lessons in them. This one has 15 or 16 lessons. Let's see, yes, yeah, 16 lessons. So it will take me eight weeks to get through this. So I strive to complete one unit per quarter. So in a full school year, that's four units, but sometimes it's three and I'm okay with that. So I wanted to show you guys how I prepare my science units. Now I'm all ready to go and I've got everything set and kind of planned out. I've got my list so the next time I do a grocery pickup I can just drop all those things into my cart as well. And now we're all ready for once we get past the holidays to begin our brand new um, science unit and I'm really excited about this. We're gonna have some fun with it and um, I know it's a topic we all, myself included, are going to enjoy learning about. So thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Give me a thumbs up before you go. Let me know what your next science unit is if you're using the good and the beautiful down in the comments below. And I always have their website linked for you guys so you can head right there. Um, and maybe you wanna do space science um, right after the new year as well, then we can kind of do it together and I hope you guys got some good ideas from me. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video really soon. Bye guys. Gosh. Snowflakes are coming down Collapse into water when they hit the ground I hear the sound of empty streets